good morning. Welcome to City Center Church. We're happy that you're here with us today, either in person or online. Um, if you are new with us today, we would love to be able to say hello to you. And so we've got a few ways that we can do that. Um, if you're here in person, you can fill out one of the hello cards that's in the um, back of your chair and drop it off at the welcome booth at the end of service. And someone will have a small gift for you. Um, also in person, you can text the word hello to 306-517-6336. Fill out a bit of information. Um, connect at the end of service to the um, welcome booth and someone will connect with you and give you a gift. If you are online, it's the same process. So you would text the word hello to 306-517-6336. Fill out that information. Um, and if you are living in Canada, then we will send a small gift out to you after we've connected with you. Um, so we have some upcoming things happening. The ushers, I believe, will have um, a volunteer form for um, a doorstep go Christmas. Oh, maybe not, but that's okay. So we are still looking for some more volunteers. Um, the actual deliveries are happening on December um, 8th, and uh, we will need some help with the prepping and the deliveries. And um, you can go to mission20.ca slash doorstepgo slash volunteer to sign up for that. I think that they do have some forms at the welcome booth as well that you can check out at the end of service. And so some events that are in the future um, for you to mark on your calendars. We will be having a Christmas Eve candlelight service at 8 p.m. on December 24th, Christmas Eve. It is a wonderful time for the whole family. We will have some Christmas carols, um, a children's story, and a message about the meaning of Christmas. Also, during that time of year, um, we will have a New Year's Eve gathering, 7 p.m. on December 31st. Um, we'll gather here at the church for a time of wor worship. Then we will head over to the other building across the street for some games, food, and counting in the new year together. Um, so with that said, there are no services on Christmas Day or New Year's Day as those both land on a, a Sunday. And so we've um, planned some um, services for the day before. Uh, prayer times Friday at 7 p.m. Um, if you have children, four and under, you can check them in at the Children's Church desk over there at the back. Um, and then if your children are 5 to 11, they will be dismissed to go over to the Children's Church building after praise today. And um, yeah, all services live on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our website. So hallelujah. Oh. Come on, let's stand. We're going to praise. Wherever you're at, if you're online joining us, Father God, we just thank you for what you have in store for us. We count it a privilege and honor to be able to come and praise and worship you. We thank you for your presence and your spirit in this place, Father God. And we are going to jump in and worship you for who you are. In Jesus' name, everyone said? Amen. Well, we've been teaching you a new song. I have not led from up here in, I don't know, maybe years. So uh, uh, it's a little different for me, but uh, I'm, I'm excited to be in front of you leading today. And we're going to do a new song we ago the words will come up on the screen it's about passion and uh, let's go for it Woo. come on put your hands together
Come on, who's ready to give it all this morning?
It may take stepping out beyond to, in order to praise uh, in the middle of going through something. But honestly, it's, you know, easy to praise. Not easy, but easier to praise when nothing's going on. It's like that scripture verse where they're saying in the Gospels where it's like, you know, everybody can love somebody that loves them back. That's easy. People that like you, yeah, yeah, we get along, but it's way more hard to love somebody that isn't loving you back. It's easier to praise when everything's going right, but praise isn't something that's just in reaction to what's going on. Praise is a setup for something that's about to happen. And so in the middle of the storm, in the middle of what we're going through, you go, why do we come on Sundays? Why do we do this? Why do these people at the front stand? And why, do, you know, sitting in the back and maybe you're new today and that's fine. You can just sit there and experience this. But for those of us that know that, th there's power in praise. And even though we may be in the middle of some storms or you may be in the middle of some storms, there is power in praise. And we praise in the middle of the storm knowing that no matter what it seems like in the natural, I was going to say a lot of other things, but I just want to say this. No matter what it seems like in the natural, God. That's enough. No matter what it seems like in the natural, no matter how stormy this is, no matter what's going on, God. And so, sometimes we need to say soul like David did in the, in the Psalms. Soul, you're going to sing a little louder. You may not feel like it. It may not seem like everything's going, but guess what? Foot, you can tap a little faster. Hands, you can clap a little more. And it's not just about, oh, we're, you know, conjuring up this, but it's because we're stepping into a place of praise that allows things to shift. And it also gets our hearts on Him. Come on. Come on. So, we're going to sing. We're going to praise you, Jesus. Because <laughs> no matter the storm, your name, God, is higher, greater, bigger than anything we've ever faced. <laughs> Have your rightful place in this place, oh God. Singing holy, 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 holy. And as you do that, you can feel uplift. Because as the song says, the hymn, turn your eyes to Jesus. We will sing, sing, sing. Yes, we will. 
grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. to love about you heaven and earth adore you kings and kingdoms bow down son of god you are the one jesus you are the one we're living for When we shout your praise, shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. Jesus, glory God. Come on, one more time. We will sing, sing, sing. And make music with the heavens. We will sing, sing, sing the voices come on grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise lift high the name of jesus one more time just the voices from your heart here we go sing sing come on church and make music with the heavens we will sing 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 Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. Yes. Come on, give him praise in this place this morning. Glory, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Woo. Jesus. I've said this before, I always find it so profound that over the next, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours, all over the world this morning, everyone's doing this. And so we're not alone. And you know, heavens, there's angels, it says, and they're singing, holy, holy, holy. What a powerful day as we all praise and worship together as a church body on a Sunday morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you can high five somebody next to you. If you have kids from 5 to 11, I know we have some new people here. Who's the teachers today? Pastor Kathy's here. She'll be at the back. She'll wave and there's some helpers. We have a building across the street for kids. It's got a gym. It's got a worship center. The service is designed for them. Uh, a lot more energy and so you can go back there they'll meet you back there you can walk them over if you're new why don't you say hi to somebody give them a high five shake their hand welcome them tell them how much you love them tell them how good their hair looks jake your hair looks great 
Nicole. Love your sweater. Come on, tell someone what's good this morning. Aylin, I love your dress. <laughs> Hallelujah. still not paying attention. Aren't we glad for the freedoms we have in this country to this point that we can come and worship? Uh, we just had Remembrance Day. And so uh, uh, hopefully you took some time to remember uh, whatever way uh, you did that uh, there was a price paid and everything wasn't perfect in Canada's history and isn't. But we still have an ability to come and praise and people gave their lives to have what we have today. So we're grateful. We're grateful. Uh, for that, for the freedoms we have, and we'll continue to believe that we'll have this today. Um, I'm here to do the, the offering, and so uh, really the verse that's been in my heart, you, most of you are very familiar with this, uh, we do this practice. Um, really just the idea of the connection I've been contending with and, and, and looking into more between my money and my heart. Come on, I'm going to say that again. How many of you know your money and your heart are closely related? Oh, I don't know if you believe that. I promise you the things you probably spend the most money on are the things that are closest to your heart. I don't know if people are just, <laughs> this isn't new, it was like rocket science, but it's true. The fat, your family, right? Why, because they're closest to your heart. And so this idea of oftentimes of giving and we're like, why do you ask for giving? Why does the church want us to give? It really isn't about the money, it's always about the heart. And money is a representation, a clear one in this day and age of our time, our efforts, our energy. Uh, in Old Covenant or Old Testament, they would give <laughs> animals and different things like that. It wasn't always financial, but that's how we represent kind of currency. Now, I know some churches, well, maybe they're not anymore. They were accepting crypto, although now it's, everything's going crazy with that. Who knows what's going on? But it's a currency to represent our hearts. And so Luke 6.38 is one where all, many of us might be familiar with. It says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Oh, I should just read the NASB. That was the one I learned growing up. But uh, give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. By the standard or the, the heart in which you give, you will receive. It's the heart in which we give that we receive. And so obviously even the simple principle of sowing, and I don't want to take a lot of time, but then I end up taking lots of time. As any farmer knows, in order to get a harvest, you must sow a seed. And so the way to give is that, or the way to receive is you first must give, but the heart in which we do it is important. And this next verse, we usually read Luke 6.36, Luke 6.38, and we don't always read Luke 6.37. Because we like the part that says, give and it shall be given unto you, and it's going to overflow, and this is good, and you're giving, and you're giving. And then there's this next thing that Luke encourages us in Luke 6.37, the verse before. Before he talks about giving, it's a whole thing on generosity and giving and heart conditions. He says this, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you'll be pardoned. Some translations say forgive, and you'll be forgiven. So we've been talking a lot about in this church about a heart of generosity and giving, not just as an event on a Sunday, and tithing's important because I think it helps us keep our hearts in check towards God and putting Him first, but an attitude of generosity and giving. And Luke tells us, hey, given it shall be good, give, uh, uh, measured back, given it shall be given unto you, good measure pressed down, shaken together. But the verse before that talks about if you give judgment, guess what's going to be given back to you? If you give, uh, what's the other word they use there? If you give, uh, 
Come on, where is it? If you condemn, guess what's going to be brought back to you? If you don't forgive. And so we've really just been talking about a heart of giving and generosity, and finance is one aspect of it. And so today we're going to take up an offering because it's a representation of our heart. But the challenge I want to give you as well is let's make sure in our giving we don't come like the Pharisees and we give the 10% and it never transitions to any other part of our life. So that we're always looking in the things that we do, we're looking to give. Because do unto others, the golden rule, like that's not even a, like, you know, a Bible verse, but we all know it, do unto others as you have them to you. When we put first giving, and watch this, when we look to not judge, when we look to not condemn, when we look to forgive, guess what? It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's an indication of where our heart's at. And I believe God's saying in this season, as we're looking to go beyond, God's saying, hey, can we be generous not only in our finances, but in our heart for others? And so that's the kind of what just God's been dealing with me and showing me and going, how can I continue to be generous in my judgment or not judging, generous in my not condemning, in my thoughts towards people, in my frustrations towards things, in my forgiveness, can I continue to do that? Because as I do that, not only in that area, that also ties into our heart and it, and, and it goes into our finances. And I, I don't have time, but I actually think with these two verses, potentially, I haven't fully looked it out, but if we struggle with judgment, condemnation, and unforgiveness, it actually may hinder our receiving in the financial realm. But that's just kind of, I'll leave that there. And so well, uh, our practice is to come and give the money and the offering uh, up at the front. Did I say the money? Oh. And so Linda is going to bring those up. And so uh, we do this because we believe it's a seed, it's an offering, and it's a sign of worship. If you see, we have praise and worship. And I know you sit down in between, but we really believe it's praise, giving, and worship is all an act of worship to God. They're not separate events. And so we encourage you to come. There's envelopes in the seats in front of you for most of you, behind you. There's four ways to give. Uh, apps, texts, different things like that. And so let's be generous today. Let's have a heart of giving. And if you've never done this before, maybe you can just say, hey, God, you know, I don't know. Think, well, is there something I can be generous with today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My mouth is really dry today. Come on, smile at somebody beside you and say, it's a good day. It's a good day. I'm excited Pastor Greg's in the house. I don't know if we announced that this morning. But it's a good day because I don't have to preach. No, that's not why it's a good day. I always manage to find myself preaching here. So come on, let's stand. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity to continue to be generous, God, that you help us deal with our hearts, not only in the area of finances, although that's a key indication of putting you first and generosity, but in every area, even how we think about things, say, talk about things in our area of judgment or condemnation or unforgiveness, Father God, that you're dealing with our hearts to be generous in forgiveness, to be generous in praise, to be generous in complimenting, Father God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, why don't you come and give, and then we're going to pray for a situation and then move into worship. So I'll just let you, you can leave the lights on for a couple seconds, and then we'll shift into worship. Hallelujah. might know we had a situation uh, in the alley kind of across the street last Saturday night Sunday and somebody passed away um, from the cold or from some other circumstances and so uh, um, anytime anyone in our community that we're in something like happens it hurts it hurts and uh, people hurt uh, a year and a half ago someone we were all familiar with that uh, Pastor Jim and Kathy had put a lot of time in, uh, ended up passing away kind of just by giant tiger, and those always hurt. You know, and so in these moments, we as a church always go inward, and, and we look and go, God, what can we do better? 
We believe we're called to the inner city of Saskatoon. We believe that we can continue to minister, but we're always looking to do better and, and, and where we do it. And so, um, but I know that right now, I think Brad, if you see where Brad and Pastor Jim are, they're doing a meeting in a kind of a, in memory of them. And so uh, they're over there uh, talking to them. And if we need to, we're gonna go support it. But <clears throat> I just wanted to take time to pray into that and, and, and pray for us for Wisdom of City Center Church as we look for ways to, um, there's needs everywhere in the city. There's so many needs right now. Homelessness is on the rise and we're very aware of it. And so um, to try to fulfill every need, you know, can get overwhelming and daunting, but we know God is bigger. Come on. We know God's got unlimited resources. We know God's got a direction that can maybe step into that. And so we're going to look at that. But we want to just pray for anyone that's hurting. We want to pray for the family. I know the mom came in today of the son uh, that, that, that passed. And so um, that's never easy. And, and so uh, can you join your faith with me? Can we do that? Father God, we just thank you for that family right now in the name of Jesus. That your peace rests on them. The Father God, we know that there's frustration, there's anger, and, 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 and people want reasons. But Father God, I just thank you first and foremost that they can have peace in who their son was and the celebration of his life, Father God. That you, we have an opportunity to show them your love. Father God, and if there's areas that we as a church can continue to change and develop and, and, and to do that, that you open doors, that you provide resources, that you provide provision in order for us to be able to do that better and clearer, Father God. And Father God, most importantly, that as we, the people of City Center Church, go about our daily lives, that we don't walk by needs. God, that we're being led by you, that if we need to talk to somebody, if we need to speak to them, that Father God, you help us be the good Samaritan. That we have a heart for those people that you said, when you did it for the least of these, you did it for me, Father God. Peace over this, your love. In any way that we can help, Father God, that we're able to do it. Let your presence rest on them right now. On that mom who's grieving. Let your compassion be on her. On that sister who said it was her brother. Right now, I just speak against the works of darkness as well, that hold people and trap them and bind them. Father God, let your light shine. Show them your love, your Father's heart, in Jesus' name.
inexplainable. I, come on, sing. I your love. can hardly think. It's your love, love so undeniable. I, I can, I can hardly speak. And your peace so unexplainable. I, come on, sing your love. I can, can sing about hardly love one more time. think. It's your love so So unexplainable, I, I can hardly think as you call me, deeper still 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 as you call me. So maybe you're new and your first time in church or you're watching and you're like, I don't even know if Jesus is all I want. But I like sometimes flipping the script on these. And it says, you know this verse, many of you, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And I say, what was the joy set before him? I believe he was picturing everyone through each video. And I think, I've always said this, I think he didn't, 
He did it for all humanity, but I think he would have done it for one. And so we sing, Holy Spirit, rest on us. You're all I want. And sometimes that fails. It's not how I'm living. It's not how I'm doing it. But guess what? No matter where I'm at, I sometimes know or I know that he's sitting up there singing it to us. You're all I want. And I know that never fails. So no matter how kind of week we've had and we may be struggling with singing that, the Holy Spirit's resting on us and Jesus is saying, you're all I want. You're all I want. I died on the cross for you. I was picturing you. And I was holding you in my heart. Even when you aren't feeling like you deserve it, you're all I want. <laughs> you're all I child come on let Jesus sing that over you you're all he wants you're all he wants mm. Jesus help us to grow in the revelation and understanding of that statement that you love us we're who you want to be with you we're who you want that we live our lives out of that revelation of love, of us not just trying to love you, but that you love us. God, that as like I preached last Sunday, that we become rooted and grounded in the understanding of love. How much you love us. How much you think about us. And Father God, that love, that revelation, burns a desire in us to show that out to others. So I thank you, Father God, today we feel, we sense, we know your love, not in the first dimension, second dimension, third dimension, but full four-dimensional experiential love of God. Blow on us, breathe on us. The rivers of your love just coming on us, God, that it's more than just a head knowledge, but it's an it's intimate experiential knowledge. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Well, thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Well, I have the privilege of, uh, I'll grab this. I don't know if you guys have a plan for that, but I'll grab this. Yeah, we'll use that. You want the table? Is this the right height? Oh, it's adjustable. Would you like a couch or a pillow? <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> I have the privilege to introduce our, yeah, you can bring it up. I don't know if he needs to. The... There we go. Oh, I will figure it out. The privilege of introducing our minister this morning. Uh, Pastor Greg Gallen, uh, you may be familiar with him. I'm familiar with him as Coach. Coach Gallen. Stink, you guys. No. <laughs> um, it's interesting as you become a lead pastor who's been in the church a long time. Uh, you can look at people who you've had different relationships over time, whether it be someone who permed your hair when you were 13. Do you know Verona permed my hair at 13? Pat yelled at me for getting math wrong in high school. You know, influential people. Uh, but Greg, Pastor Greg, when he was coach, uh, mentored me, helped me through one of the toughest times of my life through high school. Um, I'm not going to get into any details, but... Uh, I firmly believe if it wasn't for him and our relationship, I probably wouldn't have stayed the course because when something happened, there was, there was, uh, felt very alone and, 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 uh, I didn't always like what he said, but, uh, I knew he cared and we'd been through the battle together and through basketball. So we had developed it through that. And so we had four or five years of on the team and, uh, and so, uh, 
Uh, it's such an honor for me to get him to come share. And I've seen him change and grow. I think he kind of cringes probably like we all do on some of the decisions and the ways we did stuff when we were younger. Um, <laughs> well, you've said that. You're like, oh, you just kind of shake. But I loved it. I don't know. It, it, you know, it was great. But what I've noticed this, and I, I, we shared this in the, the announcements leading up to this. Um, you'll know he, he's, he can be deep, but he, 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 he plums the depths of, of relationship with Jesus. And it comes out whether you can fully grasp every word he's saying, because what he's trying to do is communicate what he's knowing and living in his heart. But this I always know. At the end, even when he talks, even for moments, you feel the love of Jesus come in the place. And I remember the last few times, like, it, it's, he's, he's expressing it, and, and he's bringing in compassion and just sharing that. So I don't know if that's the avenue he's going to go, but I think without him trying, it just comes out. And so I encourage you to open up your hearts and just get ministered to this morning. Let the love of God overwhelm you and just let him come and just speak into that. Uh, he is Dr. Greg Gallen now. He has his Master's of Divinity and his Doctorate in Ministry. Did I get that right? So he's been into school, and so it's not just him coming up and kind of like some of this stuff. There's, there's letters behind some of this. So you got to listen double. No, that's not why. It's because he's called and things like that. But I just want you to, uh, can you just stand for a second and honor him with, by just uh, giving him a hand as we come and honor the man of God and just receive him today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on up. Uh, we'll do this mic here. Yeah, we love you, Derek and Nicole. So appreciate these guys and their family and, and the love that they have in their heart for the Lord. Praise God. Why don't you go ahead and be seated. I get to be seated. Just want to say hi to everybody who's tuning in online and want to know that you're welcome and you're thought of and that you're not alone. You know, an interesting part of, let me just say my wife says hello and gives her greetings and uh, loves, loves you guys and appreciates you guys. She's at home. We just had our, sorry, I'm gonna get into the grandkids already, but we just had a grandchild at the beginning of this week. It's our fifth grandgirl. The oldest grandgirl will be four years old in December 31st, and uh, they all come in procession from there. So we're really, really excited about, about that. So anyway, uh, my wife says hi, and we love you guys. But if you're tuned in online, I just want to say that you're loved, you're thought of by God. One of the things that the Lord has used us in I really love what Pastor Derek said here. Right now, there's people all over the globe, obviously different time zones, that are worshiping Jesus, that know Jesus like you know Jesus. Jesus has something in his heart for you, for me, today. So I would ask you to just consider what are, you, what are your expectations today? Why, why did you come to church? And just, just think about that just for a moment. Why did you come to church today? One of the things that the Lord's used us in is we put together a worship course for inmates in the federal prison. And so I know right now there are inmates in their cell worshiping Jesus. I couldn't help but think in Revelation, John on the Isle of Patmos in jail We often look for a way out, but God calls us to a way in. That worship 
is not for God. It's for us. It's always to God, but it's for us. And one of the reasons why we put that program together for the inmates was so that they could encounter Jesus in an atmosphere of worship. So we, there's music on there, but there's teaching and leading, leading men that are probably out of their cell for maybe two, two hours a day. It's very inhumane. but they're entering into the most real place of the universe. You know, the book of Revelation is really a book about worship because John gets the revelation of what is going on in heaven, the worship that's going on in heaven. John, through worship, enters the most real place of the universe. So when we worship together, we're just part of millions and millions of people that are worshiping God here, but also the worship that's going on in heaven. And it's all centered around Jesus. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. You're worthy of it all. That particular song is actually playing right now in the prison. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. I wish I could sing it all, but I can't. So what's the expectations that you have today? I want to read Hebrews chapter 12. And once you hold those expectations before the Lord, maybe it's a prayer request, maybe it's... uh, something you're going through. You know, you that are online, I encourage you to open your heart. Father, we just thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity to meet with you, to hear what's on your heart, for you have something in your heart for us. So, Lord, I pray that you'd Speak to every heart through your Holy Spirit and lead and guide and direct this time. Keep us from all pride and keep us from all insecurity and help us to hear and respond to your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth. And now he has promised saying, yet once more I I shake not only earth but heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for God is a consuming fire. Do you have any shaking going on in your life? right now? Is there anything shaking? Are you experiencing a shaking? Maybe it's a financial shaking. Maybe it's a physical issue. Maybe it's relational. As we look around our communities, look around in politics and finances, there's all kinds of shaking going on. The writer of Hebrews says, but we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So I want us to just take a moment and and think about the kingdom that we're receiving and how we receive it. The book of Hebrews, it goes through a, 
uh, a number of exhortations to people who are being shaken. Throughout the book of Hebrews, it talks about don't neglect the great salvation that you've been given. Don't drift away. There's a, there's a drifting away that's happening. Through all kinds of reasons, but you know, a very simple reason why we drift away, what do we have to do to drift away? Nothing. Just do nothing and you'll drift away. But he also talks about in this, in the book of Hebrews, that we can become dull of hearing. Notice how he started this, or the first verse that we read. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. That you're receiving a kingdom. Well, let me just take you through a, a series of thoughts here. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto him. So what does it mean to seek first the kingdom of God? Well, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as a man plants a seed in the ground. It goes from seed to root to tree to fruit. How do we receive the kingdom of God? We receive it like seed in soil. Remember Jesus gave this parable in Mark chapter 4. He gave this parable of the sower, right? And the sower sows seed and this and this message, the word of God is is finding different soils, different conditions of people's hearts. So we have to ask ourselves constantly, how is your heart? How open are we? Jesus said at the end of the parable, he said, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Well, he wasn't talking about these ears on the outside of our head. He was talking about the ear that's in the center of our heart. How are we hearing and responding to what God is speaking to us? At the beginning of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, the very first verse, it says this, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in the times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, by Jesus. Jesus speaks. Not just English words, but his life speaks. There's something about his life that speaks to our heart. And that's the message of the gospel that's been preached and ministered for thousands of years. And people have opened to the truth of the gospel, of the good news. So I want to simply take you to a... Uh, scripture and it's been said that uh, if you don't know anything about the Bible start here and if you know everything about the Bible return here and it's John 316 for God Pastor Derek said this God it begins and ends with God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That is the seed of the gospel. But the gospel is not simply an idea, a philosophy. It's a person. So this may be one of the most well-known verses in the Bible, but one of the most famous conversations just precedes this. So I'd just like to read through this 
conversation with Nicodemus here, John chapter 3 and verse 1. And I just pray that you would open your heart and let God speak to you in some way. And let him encourage you. Because there is a shaking going on. When there's a shaking, usually dust flies and skews our vision. Sometimes the fog just kind of comes in from behind us and just uh, before we know it, we're just in this fog. But we're returning to the very heart of the gospel when we return to John 3 and verse 1. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, This man came by night to Jesus and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. What did Nicodemus see in Jesus? He saw somebody that was in touch with God like he wasn't and wanted to be. He comes by night. He's he's a afraid to fully associate with him. You know, we're, we're going through uh, some battles in the church, in the kingdom of God, and we it, it's always been this way. And it's a fear of association. It's a fear of associating with sinners or, I mean, we have a shaming culture. And there's a force to that. There's a force that could drive us away, cause us to fall away, unless we have this sure foundation. And Jesus is going to speak to him. And Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again or born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Jesus immediately says two things. There is a certainty and there is a realm. There is something that, Nicodemus, you're you're not in touch with that you have to see. And that's the way God speaks to every one of our hearts is to help open our eyes to see the really real. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? I've been maybe slow to learn this, but I think I'm doing better. Of just saying, Jesus, what's on your heart? What's what's on your heart? And just, I want to follow your heart. I I could tell you stories of how God has led us by his heart. He's given us a glimpse of somebody, like, for example, in prison, somebody in a senior's home, somebody, remember the Macedonian call, how when they're seeking God and God gives them a glimpse of a person who's crying out for help, God's showing his heart. To us, so that we could follow him into the places that he wants to be. He wants to touch people. But as I was meditating on this, on this verse, Nicodemus said, "How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time?" And that word "second chances" came up to me. So, so, some, sometimes we. We get so despondent. We get so focused on the temporal that we miss the eternal. And we live with regret. Nicodemus is maybe saying in his heart, like, is there such thing really as second chances? Can can things really get any better than what they are right now? And I think that's for somebody here today or somebody online 
your best years are ahead of you. Just ministered to a 100-year-old lady here just this last week. You know what Jesus has in her heart, in his heart for her? Your best years are ahead of you. He goes to prepare a place. There's a prepared place for every one of his children. A place to belong, a place that we matter, that we fit in, that we are significant. There's a prepared place for every one of us. Can we live from that place in this place? That changes everything. We begin to live from his love with nothing to fear, nothing to earn, nothing to prove. We spend so much of our life trying to prove that we're significant, that we matter, that we make a difference. And yet in God's mind, I love what Pastor Derek said, He's singing over us. He's committed to us. He's fully committed to us. Verse 5 says, And Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Your life, my life, begins with the grace of God. It's Christ alone, by grace alone, through faith alone. Your life was not your parents' idea. It was not your grandparents' idea. It wasn't your great-grandparents' idea. It wasn't your ethnicity's idea. It was God's idea. Think about that with me, just just for a moment. Think about the source of your identity. It comes from the very heart of God. You are God's beloved. We are to be loved people. But we tend to resist God's love more than we realize. Here's the Spirit of God working in our midst right now. How do you feel? How do you feel? I sound like a psychologist, but how do you feel right now? Let me say it this way. How does it feel to be so loved? How does it feel to be so loved by Jesus? Because that's the realm. That's the really real. That's the reality. That's how God really feels about us. Our identity is born of him. Not of the flesh. Jesus is saying, you have an earthly father, but you must be born again of a heavenly father because your true identity, your true significance is born of the heart of God. Wow. If we could ever let that be our come from place, we would never fear. We would never try to earn things. We would know that we're significant, we matter. We're learning to be loved. And you see it, you see it in our our lives and our actions and our reactions to things. We live very insecure. And yet there's a realm a realm that Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus and he's spoken to people throughout the centuries. 
and the Spirit hovers over us here today. Like th this isn't unique to you and, and God. This, is, this has been going on for thousands of years in millions of people. Verse 7 says, Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who's born of the Spirit. Jesus is saying, can you see the wind? I was just in a, a, a chapel here the other day ministering to some inmates, and there was a window I said, you know, when you say it's windy outside, how do you know it's windy? Do you see the wind? No, you just simply see the effects of the wind. There's thousands and millions and billions of people that have felt the effects of being loved. And it's just transformed them, changed them. We could probably go through the room and maybe every single one of you could tell of a time where God got a hold of your heart. You knew that you knew that you knew that you were loved by God. You were forgiven by him. That's our new come from place, but we tend to drift away. We tend to become dull of hearing. We tend to resist God's love more than we realize. But those who allow themselves to be loved the most are changed the most. Let, let me say it again. Those who allow themselves to be loved the most are changed the most. Have you ever been in a relationship where the person that you desired to love or show affection to care for refused it, had a hard time receiving it. Well, if that happens in our natural relationships, how much more does it happen or same amount with our relationship with the Lord? But the most transforming force in the universe is God's love. It's the greatest revelation we could ever have. Because God is love. What is God giving away at the cross? A new philosophy, a new set of rules, a new covenant. You know, we could kind of maybe touch on the, but he's giving himself. He's giving himself completely away. While you were yet sinner, Christ died for you. God's not trying to figure out how he feels about you. He's not trying to decide, well, if he's, you know, if he measures up, then I'll love them. That's not God's love. God's love is unconditional. It's who he is for God. It begins and ends there. For God so loved, so loved. It's not for God so was angry. God was so frustrated. No, God so loved the world. See, and that, put, that puts it in a, in a kind of a bigger context, but where the gospel gets powerful is when it becomes personal. That's why Jesus is having a personal conversation with Nicodemus. All, all through, these, all through these, uh, this gospel of John, Jesus is having personal encounters with people. They're encountering his love over and over again. Verse 
Verse 9 says, Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? There's a lot of things that we cannot and will not ever be able to explain. It's a mystery. It's a mystery that my wife loves me. It's a mystery. I can't explain that. How do I explain my love for her? I mean, you try, you express. But it's a mystery. Creation, where did it all come from? It's a mystery. You can't explain to me where this creation come, came from. If you th think you can, you know, I have a hard time believing that. Or where are we going? What's our future? Eyes not seen or ear heard. What God has prepared for those who, it's, it's beyond our imagination. But what God does is he steps in, not with trying to answer all the questions. He steps in with himself. He's asking, how is this going to happen? And Jesus is trying to get him rooted and grounded in an unshakable kingdom in the who, who we're grounded in. You know, in the midst of the mystery of where we came from, where creation came from, and our eschatology, how things are all going to end up, there stands a person who really lived, who really suffered, who really died and really rose again. He stands in the middle of human history, concretely. He's not a, he's a historical fact. The resurrection is a reality. That is what your faith, my faith, is grounded and founded in a person. His name is Jesus. How can these things be? We, we, we tend to ask those questions instead of it being grounded in the, in the who. I, I have this picture in my mind that, that helps me, that in the middle of human history stands this cross that props up time from beginning to end. It's propped up time from falling in on us, from us being consumed by our own selfishness, by our own brokenness. But the cross, we don't worship a cross we worship a person. So the Holy Spirit is, is, is working in our hearts and our lives all the time. One, one of the things that I think is really being challenged in the church today is hearing God's voice. But God does speak. And we read some scriptures just earlier. He speaks more, most clearly and definitively through Jesus. Who is Jesus? Best question you could ever get answered. Who is Jesus to you? Jesus says to Peter, who do men say that I am? He's saying to his disciples, but he says to Peter, but who do you, who do you say that I am? Because when the gospel gets personal, then it becomes powerful. What's the source of that power? It's God's love. You can put Jesus in the grave, but you can't keep him in the grave. 
who raised Jesus from the dead? The Father, the Son. Jesus said himself, you, you destroy this temple, I'll raise it up in three days. The Spirit. What, what does that tell us about the triune love of God? It cannot be separated. Cannot. You can put Jesus in the grave. How far did Jesus go to save you, to save me? All the way. What, what kind of needs do we have? He's overcome it. Jesus answered and said to him in verse 10, are you a teacher of Israel and do not know these things? I, I kind of sense that Jesus is saying, like, remember, like, the wind in, like, the Old Testament that you read about? How the Spirit hovered over the waters, and then God began to speak. He began to speak. And then chaos happened because of the fall and, and there's the flood and, and then God's spirit hovers over the waters, creates a calm peace. When the children of Israel find themselves in slavery and God delivers them by the wind pushing back the waters, making a way, And many, many other things that Jesus would have said. Nicodemus, like the wind, the spirit. In this verse, if you go to the Greek, wind, spirit, is the exact same word. Remember the wind? Remember the wind in your life? Do you remember how the Holy Spirit got a hold of you? Somehow, some way. We could go through the room. You could tell stories. Uniquely personal. But that's the way relationships are. Somehow, some way, God got his love across to you. If he got some rules across to you, that's a different thing. That's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about new birth. He's talking about being born from above. He's talking about letting God speak for himself. <sighs> letting God speak for himself. Do you know what projection is? Is when I tell Jim, this is how you think, Jim, this is how you feel. I project my thoughts, my feelings on him. And Jim goes like, uh, you know, probably not. We feel violated. We feel like, well, you, you don't know me. I love this uh, quote from Eddie Vedder. I think I, I think I have it in here. You may be here this before, but it's, it's one of the most significant. I didn't ask you how much time I had. What time is it? It's 12 o'clock. What time did I start? Psalm 1? What? Okay, so I've been up here for half an hour. Okay, we're wrapping up. Um, well, let me try to paraphrase it. Eddie Vedder, Pearl Jam, rock star. He said, you don't love me, speaking to his audience. He said, you love who you think I am. And don't tell me that you know me. Because I don't even know myself. We often just wander try to make something of ourselves. 
instead of letting God speak to us, let him speak for himself. How does he really feel about you? Jesus went around just declaring people forgiven. Like, who does that? You're forgiven. Like, who does that? Who can do that? There's only one person. His name is Jesus. And there's no sin bigger than his sacrifice. There's no love greater than the demonstration of his love. No greater revelation we could have than God's love. Where's our hearts today? Perfect love casts out fear. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. What is the truth? Is it a what? Or is it a who? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is passionate about us knowing the love of the Father. The love of the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit. It's what's hovering over every one of us here today. And those who are loved the most, those who allow themselves to be loved the most, are changed the most, are freed the most, are delivered the most. Because perfect love casts out all fear. Thank God for his patience with us. This whole idea of seed, the, the, the seed of being God's beloved, Think of how powerful that is. Jesus, Jesus said this. It's not the size of your faith that matters. It's the source of your faith. He said you could have just faith the size of a mustard seed. Well, you are born again of incorruptible seed. Incorruptible. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And should be shaken right off of us. We don't have to fear the shaking. And you might, again, you might be going through all kinds of shaking. We all go through it. There's no way around it. There's only a person that we find in it. The sure foundation. And he's never changed how, he's, how he feels about you. He deeply, deeply loves us. I just want to end with praying with, with you guys, but this story of Jesus on the cross, crucified between two robbers, think, think of this stuck in time. This really happened. Jesus chose to go to the cross. They thought they were putting him there. He was choosing to go there. He said, no man takes my life. I willingly lay it down. They tried to take him in the garden which they did. He said, I could, I could call a legion of angels. We be done. He says to Pilate, you have no authority over me. Pilate's like, what are you talking about? What realm are you living in? What realm are we living in? Living from?
But Jesus chooses every step of pain and suffering. To meet this person, you wonder where Jesus is when the shaking's going on, when the pain is, when you're stuck. Think of, think of this criminal stuck. Stuck to the cross. He can't change his past. He has no ability to fulfill his future. But Jesus meets him right there. Where does he have to look to find the Lord? He's the suffering Savior right beside you. He meets us at every point of temptation, every point of pain. Not just to patronize us, but to deliver us. And there is no, nothing, no one more powerful than the love of God. These are just English words, but it's only as the Holy Spirit is hovering.
every soul that has drifted away, that has become dull of hearing. Lord, I pray for a, a renewal of their personal relationship with you. Lord, that you'd strengthen them, you'd encourage them as they open to you, they would receive your love in deeper, new ways, fresh faith, fresh courage. started delivering flyers. Uh, we still have six bundles of flyers. I don't know if there's somebody that can grab them, Scott, if you're there. Uh, we have six more maps that have to go out. What that is, means is there's a certain route there and inside there it's just an area to drop uh, within our community here and we're focusing on this area in the city and what we do for doorstep is on December 6th we're prepping in this building and in the past two years we've had 200 Christmas food hampers that we've done and we deliver them to families in the city almost 800 900 people within the community here not the city within this community and uh, I think registrations are about 70 or 80 now we just started dropping flyers so we need help not only flyering I'll get you to put up your hand but on December 6th prepping and then December 8th to drive and deliver these food hampers there's lots of stuff going in there we're gonna have a ham we're gonna have potatoes we're gonna have a dill pickle salad we're looking at soup and crackers just some extra stuff and then not only during Christmas we want to deliver four or five other times during the year and so that's something we did during COVID and we want to continue to do to build relationships and just love on people in the community um, and, and let them know that 
that we're here for them. And so if you could deliver some flyers, maybe you've already taken a bundle and you've delivered it. Um, we have six more to go. If you think, hey, in the next three or four days, you can deliver some, can you put up your hand and you're, you're certain you're going to do it? Um, to only take them if you are, because we want people to get to the doorsteps. But if you have an ability to do that, if you got any questions about the maps, um, it's inside the black lines. There's a flyer on the front that lets us know if you have, if you run out of flyers or if you uh, need some more, you can indicate on there how many you had left. But uh, we got someone right there who's willing to do one right beside you. <laughs> there we go. How many do we have left? How many bundles do we have left, Scott? Two? Two? Do you have any more? Or are you good? Just two more. Do we have two more people? Come on. A couple more to make sure. Anybody? Hallelujah. Oh, we got one, Brian, of course. We have one left. One left. All right, maybe I can do it this week. Me or Scott. All right. Hallelujah. Um, and there was something else. Maybe not. It's everything. Uh, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve. We're having services Saturday nights. So Eight o'clock Christmas Eve, seven o'clock, we'll meet here for a time of worship, and then we'll go across the street to ring in the new year, food, fun, fellowship. Me and Jake are going to do a rap. No, I don't know. I'm just kidding. Back in the day. Yoda go. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. So I just want to thank you all for coming and uh, being there and praying for us, and, and we're praying for you. Um, if you got... Uh, offering or if you can you can stand with me you've been sitting for a little bit hallelujah glory to god well father god we just thank you for the word you gave through pastor greg that you seal it in our hearts father that uh, uh we just become more aware as you reveal your love for us and what that means father god mm. and that you're a good father not the seed, but the source. It's not the power of the cross, but the person on the cross. So Jesus, we look to you. Thank you for this week, God, that you protect safety. We speak healing and health over anyone dealing with colds and sickness. Father God, we thank you that we get into this Christmas season, that your love and the blessing of you sending your son Jesus will be prevalent, Father God, and like Pastor Greg said, a heart of compassion will continue to grow inside each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll come up and give. That's the end of our service. See you next Sunday at 1030. If you're part of a group, don't forget Tuesday at 715. We have prayer at 7 as well. God bless you. Have a great week.